So first and foremost, what have you been playing? What have you been doing? Oh, you know, a little this, a little that. Oh. Do you want to go first? I feel like I always go first. Yeah, because I'm the host and I gotta... Okay. I ask you. <clears throat> Fair enough. What have you been playing? First off, and then you can say what you're watching if you're watching anything. Well, there's this little game that came out. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but uh, it's tell. called uh, Resident Evil 7. Oh. Right here. That just came <clears> out. <throat> it's pretty fun. So I'm, re- I'm really liking it. <clears throat> so if you guys didn't tune in last week, we saw our Let's Play Live of Resident Evil. Matt was hooked up to the VR. We have two videos on YouTube of him with the VR headset facing him, kind of like a paranormal activity sort of thing. <laughs> or we have one where it's just his gameplay, which is about an hour longer, but... You can see more of the story and more of his gameplay, some boss battles. So, yeah. So, tell me what you think about it, man. What do you think of the game so far? Um, it's been really cool. It's only the second Resident Evil game that I've put more than maybe an hour or two in, into it. Okay. Because, um, like, <clears throat> I think we talked before, I tried to play the original Resident Evil game, um, just couldn't get into it with the tank controls. I played it when it came out on on the PSN as a digital download. Um, the PS4 one. I didn't play the PS4 one. I played it on PS3, I'm pretty sure, as like uh, PS1 Classics or something oh, like okay. that. okay, yeah. Um, so I was trying to play through it, and I got not crazy far, but far enough that I'm like, I really am not liking this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the only other game that I've played longer than that would be Resident Evil 4, when I played it originally on GameCube. Yeah, I watched you play that. And then I played it on the Wii, and thought about playing it again on PS2. <laughs> but I never beat that one either. Mm. I got probably like two thirds of the way through the game. I got into the second disc on the the GameCube game, um, but I know there was some stuff that I didn't come across. There was a couple weapons that I didn't get to yet. So okay, so t- tell us about the audience. So I mean, as a person who's never heard of Resident Evil Seven or never heard of Resident Evil at all because they live in a cave or something so, like that, tell us about what's so great about Resident Evil Seven. So it's interesting. They changed perspectives. Um, for a while, Resident Evil was all about fixed camera angles, um, being more of a cinematic presentation, which was very cool, very right. very enjoyable. Made controlling the characters weird at the time because mm-hmm. you're controlling left and right for which direction the character moves, and then up is always your walk forward, regardless of which way your camera is facing. Right. It's so a pretty- like, it's a weird thing to kind of wrap your head around, especially now. It feels very antiquated and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then for a while, Resident Evil, starting with four. Uh, moved the camera so it was over the shoulder and was more of like an action gamey feeling to it, uh, which was pretty cool. And then they kind of took the series a little too far in that direction with a little bit too much focus on the action and not so much on the gameplay, right. exploration, puzzle solving type of stuff or survival. Um, but then this game seems to walk back that overstep and then it brings you into first person view. So you're wandering around um, this. I want to say plantation, but it's not a plantation. Which it's one of the first <clears throat> one of the first Resident Evil games to do first person view. Yeah. Besides like the old like on rail shooters they had in on the rail shooters like on games. Yeah. yeah. There was something else that came out on PS2, and I can't remember the name of it. I'm yeah, pretty sure you it. had it. Yeah, I played through um, it. Me and Levi did. Yeah. But um, it's interesting. Uh, I think it works really well. Um, the environment lends itself great in uh, oh, yeah, first that. person. The whole concept of exploring a giant house and Solving puzzles in first person works yeah. really well. This, uh, after watching you play, you can definitely tell. I mean, if you even watched the hints or if you want to check it out yourself, there are tons of reasons why if you are faint of heart or you get gro- grossed out by a lot of you know disgusting things or uncleanly environments, mm-hmm. this this game will definitely you know kind of hit those needles on the point for you a little bit. It might kind of get to those. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I think it's too many analogies at once. Um, <laughs> <laughs> make just, it more better. It's Come a on. very all the analogies. Just make it more better. It's more better to have <laughs> <laughs> the gross and grotesque there in this environment. It just matches very well because they just kind of hit the nail on the head. There's yeah. an analogy there. Yep, that was one. When it comes to just being disgusting, being unclean. Yeah, like that's the biggest thing. I, every time I watch you play, I'm like, this is so not clean. This is and so everything is super gross. Yeah, it's like either expired or <clears throat> has. It gets a Rusty little better or like the just... farther you get into the game. Like the environments don't feel as dilapidated and completely disgusting like it does in that first section. Okay. Like it was like when I watched you play, you're like, "Hey, do you want to try it out?" I'm like, "No." I'm, it's still I'm pretty like, gross. I don't want to touch that. <laughs> I, there was a super disgusting boss battle that I did today, which 
I was kind of bummed out about because I was like, oh, this is this is not cool. But it was still fun. Like it was, I loved it. I have loved every minute playing yeah. this game, and I really want to keep playing it. And it's all I can think about playing. That's good. <clears throat> I'm glad you like it. Yeah. So obviously you're liking the game. Is there any mechanics that are really jumping out to you that you haven't seen any other VR game yet that's in this VR experience, um, or just in this game in general as a Resident Evil game that really makes it better than the others? It's hard to say. Um, because the thing I liked about Resident Evil 4 was that it felt really fun and action-y, and it gave me enough enemies without it feeling, like, too cheap. Okay. Um, and being able to actually control where I'm aiming and explore the area better made that really nice. Um, this game, really, it seems like, because that's the only real comparison I have is comparing it against 4. The amount of enemies that I'm experiencing and coming across in 7 is way less. Like, okay. I think it's more in line with how the first couple were. Like, frequency of enemies? The frequency or types of, of enemies, okay. yeah. Types of enemies is very low. I think it's like I can count on one hand how many types of enemies oh, I've okay. come across. More or less, yeah. Like, it's not a whole lot of variety in enemies, but they're good enemies. Yeah. And it offers enough, like, there's moments where you have, like, somebody chasing you or you have to run through areas that have lots of enemies. Mm -hmm. And so you have to decide if you're going to fight them, if you're going to run past them, or how you're going to handle that situation. Okay. Um, so they're more situational then, fights than actual, um, like, boss fights. Uh, well, I mean, no, there's still boss fights and stuff. There, okay. I've gone through quite a few boss fights at this point. Yeah. Um, I'm about, like, two-thirds of the way through the game, okay. I think, based on the trophies. Because there's, like, six story-related trophies, and I'm at the fourth story-related trophy. doing that. You're ruining but, the story for yourself. No, the trophies ahead of time. All I know, all I'm seeing is how many chapters there are. What is a table of contents in a book ruining the book? I don't read table of contents. So you can be like, oh hey, there's 30 chapters in this book, or hey, I have this much pages left. Do you not look at the page numbers? No. You don't look at how many pages you're holding on to. No. You lie. I Everyone don't. looks at pages. No, because I don't read books. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. No, but I mean, my, my Ready Player One and like a few of the other books that I have read in my lifetime. <laughs> few books. Um, One, <laughs> three, three. <laughs> yep, <laughs> just about that. No, I mean, like, I like to, I don't want to know what's happening. I don't know what to expect. I don't want to know how long my journey is going to be. I don't want to know, well, something's going to happen soon because the end of the book's coming. I mean, yeah. yes, I have my observations of how many pages I can feel in my hand, yeah. uh, you know, thickness and things like that. But mm -hmm. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know that. <laughs> oh, there's 30 chapters. I'm on chapter 27. Things are gonna be winding down now, or it's gonna. Be, I mean, yeah. No, I get that. I'm just. That's and it's not the same how, with games. That's like, not I don't, how I like my stories. It's the same with games. Like when I'm playing a story <laughs> game, I'm like, all right, I just want to see what happens to the story. I don't want to go look and see. Well, I'm on chapter 27, like Uncharted or like other yeah. games like that. And I know there's only 30 chapters. Something big is going to happen soon. I don't want to get my expectations up or ca catch them off guard or yeah. you know, be let down. So I like to let's let it unfold on its own. So yeah. I leave those things completely out of my mind. No, I'm totally opposite. I like to know that there's that I'm getting close to the destination, that I'm almost to the end. And it almost helps to motivate me to be like, oh, well, I know there's only like four more chapters on Uncharted. Right. I know there's only like one more trophy that I need to get this story related element. Yeah. So it kind of like helps to push me along and be like, hey, there is an end in sight. Just keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Because so there's other games that like, I'm like, I have no idea where the hell I'm at in this game. Yeah, it and then all of a sudden it'll 10 end, minutes, right? it could yeah. be 10 hours. And I think that's one thing that comes down with good <clears> game design too, is that if you have a good designed game, a good design, if you have a well-designed game and more it's, more, much <laughs> it's more better to have that type of design, <laughs> it'll make it clear if you're it's getting crystal. close or not, much more clear. You hit clear. that nail on the head. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. But I mean, yeah. I'm, so, so I'm really liking it. Um, and boss battles have been really cool so far. I've, it's been like a few trial and errors. Not as bad as like that first night when we were playing with the car in the, the garage. with the garage. Yeah, like that was the most I've failed at a boss fight. Like normally, it takes me. Uh, I did a boss fight today that was two tries, and really I could have done it on the first one, but I ran out of ammo, and yeah. I had too much crap in my inventory, so I couldn't pick up ammo, which was obnoxious. Yeah. Um, so I let them kill me, so that way I could restart the fight, so I'd have all right, my ammo right. respawned, and I 
I was able to and get through. That wasn't that many tries anyway when I was watching it. It was only like three or four. Was it? It felt like so um, many tries that I, first Yeah, time. usually like it's like the first time you're experiencing it, you're just trying to experience it and trying to play through the game. Yeah. The second time, right, okay, this is actually a fight. You start analyzing like their movements and like their attacks and things like yeah. that. Yeah, because it took a and while then, to figure out what the hell I was even supposed to be doing in that fight. Yeah, and if you don't beat them on that second time, then the third time is like where you're like, I already know what to expect. You kind of play it safe and you beat them usually. So. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of key, rule key, but... So, it's been really fun. As far as, so, like, VR is concerned, um, I love it in VR. That's the only way I've been playing it. has just okay. been in VR only. Yeah. Um, now, interesting and, fact that I've I found online is that yes. the majority of 10% of the players who are playing Resident Evil have been playing in VR. 10% is not a majority. No. <laughs> no. I'm rounding up to 10%. That's what's the majority of 10%. Well, no. They've said 10% are playing. Yeah, well, so in, but 10%, I mean... 10% of, of the people who are playing it and connected to the Resident Evil net whatever right. service yeah but i mean the fact that how many people got <clears throat> vr sets and how many people were buying yeah. this game i mean that's not a huge amount but it's not also a low amount either it's a pretty decent amount considering the only way to do it in vr is on playstation right because pc and xbox obviously doesn't yeah have they don't VR. have oculus or anything like that, yeah so. so i think that's i think that's a pretty decent number like i didn't know what to expect necessarily mm-hmm. but i I would be happier if it was higher, but 10% is still pretty good. Now, with this uh, Resident Evil, do you think that this is something that Capcom is going to try to capitalize on and go into? Because when they made uh, Resident Evil 4, people were like, oh, this is the best one ever. Yeah. And they're like, okay, we got to make more of them like this. Can't and spell they did capitalize that. without Capcom. So. <laughs> and they did five and they did six like that. And those were kind of more downhill because yeah. they, they got kind of away from what Resident Evil was. Yeah. This one is something they wanted to bring back to its roots, bring back to what Resident Evil made it scary, made it spooky, made the genre. Yeah. So do you think this is something that they're going to continue on making more games like this one? Or do you think they're going to try to combine this one with the action-y type? Or do you think they're just going to step away from VR altogether and kind of go in another direction? What are you thinking that is would drive? Based on how this game was made and kind of how I have been enjoying it and pretty much all the everything I read online has been positive about it, especially VR. Mm-hmm. Um, I I would be willing to say that I'd be willing to bet that Capcom is gonna double down next time when they put a Resident Evil game. I think it's gonna be more of the same, but they're gonna up the ante. They're gonna give you a bigger area to explore. They're going to give you more enemies and stuff. Still, I think it's going to stay first person. I think it's going to keep the VR um, compatibility out of the box for the entire game. More better open worlds. More better open worlds. Yeah. (laughs) Open worlds. Um, Had you asked me a couple years ago, no, I think they totally would have been like, all right, this was great. Now let's add some explosions and let's add some set pieces and let's up the ante that way. But that's not what people wanted. That's not what the fans were asking for. This is more of what the fans have been asking for. Now, watching you play this is more of like, you seem kind of more handicapped with your weapon choices. Yeah. Opposed to like Resident Evil games. I'm actually a bigger fan of myself of the older, the tank controls. Because mm-hmm. that's what I got used to in playing. I've beaten one, two, three, and half of four, and I've beaten, you know, the Code Veronica. So I've been a lot of those old tank control games. Those are mm-hmm. the ones I enjoyed. But when you play those games, you'd find grenade launchers, shotguns, pistols, double yeah. dual pistols, you'll find flamethrowers, I mean, rocket launch, you name it, grenades, everything, yeah. Molotovs. So do you think that they're going to try to maybe keep it the way it is now? But do you think really the weapon selection is a handicap? Finding all those like really kind of broken pieces of wood or splint that give you splinters or yeah. or like just a little knife that's hang up on the wall that you've... It's kind of already jacket and broken. Like, do you think that you would want more weapons, or would you want to kind of keep it as those grungy weapons? <coughs> um, like it's kind of cool if they had done it a little more like that. But that being said, there are some weapons later on that you find that are um, like a broken weapon that you have to find something to fix it mm. to to be a better upgrade for what you have. I don't want to get into like more too much upgrade. spoilers and that kind of stuff. I don't know how much of it is spoiler. And at this yeah. point. I mean, it's been out for a couple weeks, but... Yeah, so no spoilers, um, But then there's story, another but... weapon that you find, which is a pretty BA weapon that's kind of overpowered. Okay. Just a tad, but it's really well done, um, where you have to find parts of it to assemble it and put it together. Um, and then once you have it together, then you can start using it to, mm-hmm. to attack. So I, I feel like there's... Um, there's a decent amount of variety in the weapons, and a little more than I was expecting. Like I just, I was expecting it to be like, all right, here's a pistol, here's a shotgun, all right, that's it. Because I mean, it's it's more grounded. Generic, it's not right. like I'm gonna find a rocket launcher in this house or whatever. Yeah. 
type of a thing. So I didn't know what to expect, but um, the amount of weapons that I've come across and some of the weapons that I've had to use for certain situations um, have been really good and really surprising no and forks. fun <laughs> to use. Uh, no, no benchmarks. Now, um, <clears throat> now, we're talking a lot about the weapons, and I don't want to spoil anything like you said. Do you yeah. think that, just talking more about the future of Resident Evil, do you think <clears throat> that people would appreciate to have... I know they kind of want to test the waters with this and see if people liked it and if they should go in this direction or go in another direction. Um, obviously, people were liking it, like you said. Do you think that people would enjoy a more like Dead Island where they can craft their own weapons and kind of make their own tools? Do you think they should go with that or that's too much of a cliche now they should avoid it? Um, I think that they could do it and they could do it in probably a way that makes it fun again um, or just that's as good as other games do it. Make it a mini game with um, VR and move controllers, right? No, I hope not. <laughs> that's one of the things I really don't like. Although I would say like if, if they did something to up the ante for the next one, for VR, I would like to be able to do move controls. Mm. But the problem yeah, is that you that. don't have analog control that way because you don't have you can't move um, with your analog sticks because there's no sticks on the move controls. Right. So maybe like the Farpoint controller when it comes out can solve that because I know that has at least one analog stick on it for movement and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like the option though. I yeah. Think if they had an option for either one with the controller. Well, dual analogs, or even a hybrid of the controller in your left hand and a move controller in your right hand. Yeah, and like that would work if they could add support for the the nav controllers. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you get your um, your analog stick in there. Okay. But it it's been really fun VR. I have not felt sick. The only time when I cool. started almost kind of barely feeling. Like that sick was when I was playing really late at night and yeah, I was last super week was like tired. Two and a half hours. But yeah, and... that was it. Otherwise, I've been playing for an hour and a half or two hours at a time. Cool. When I've been playing, so all it's right. Been so really fun. bottom line now, Resident Evil Seven for people who are had no <laughs> idea what this was, never had a VR game before, never played one, but they want something that's scary and a new experience. Would you recommend this for them? Um, I would. It would kind of depend on what your take on like horror games are because okay. like i went into this game expecting it to be a lot spookier and a lot scarier than it is okay. um i was expecting something more i don't know like, like outlast and that kind of stuff where like i feel very like a lot of dread just walking through the house because i was expecting the enemies to be constantly roaming right um but there's sometimes when they are and you have to accommodate them and then there's sometimes when they're not so you're able to kind of free roam and explore everything as much right. as you want that happens more often than I was anticipating in it. Really? Okay. Um, so if you're looking for that game that's really kind of scary and you're constantly avoiding the monsters and the big bad guys, it might not be what you're looking for. If you if that's something that you didn't want from a horror game, by all means, go check it out because it's definitely a lot less scary and intense than I was anticipating. Kind of like an alien isolation, but not, not such a small PSN game, like a full-bred hide and seek kind of game right? um yeah not so much alien isolation just because that one does have a lot more of like the monsters constantly hunting you okay um but that that only happens in certain parts in this game okay it's so not the, it's not all the time so then now for all of our fans who are big fans of resident <clears throat> evil before in the past one all the way through six all the remakes all the hd versions everything mm -hmm. i mean people who are big fans of vr and love other vr games what would you think they would like this game or not I would say probably the majority of them would um, and should pick it up. It's okay. another great entry for the series. Again, like I said, my only point of reference for any real authority is 4, mm -hmm. um, which was a departure from the series anyways. Um, it feels like the vibes I get from playing it feel a lot like 1 from when I was watching some of my friends growing up playing 1 awesome. and doing that kind of stuff. So I, I'm really enjoying this game, and I'm as hyped as I was, this game still delivered, and I still am having fun with it, and it's going to be a platinum. And that's all we need to know right there, yeah. man. So thank you for that. Appreciate yeah, it. I'm going to actually fun. cut that and make a little a review piece for us. So, hey. um, You guys heard it here first that Resident Evil 7 <laughs> from Tearing the Hype is definitely a picker-upper. Yeah. <laughs> Pick it up. So check it out whenever you can. Um, you'll enjoy it whether you're new to the VR experience or not. So. I, I, I do highly recommend if you do have VR, um, if you have PSVR, definitely at least give the mode a try. There's a couple different options in there to make it a little more comfortable for you. Um, but out of the gate, it felt very comfortable for me. The only thing I changed on there was 
So when you're playing in VR, you're controlling your movements, like your strafing movements with the left stick, and your right stick mm -hmm. controls the direction that you're looking in. Um, and you can set... Um, it kind of works like in degrees. So like every time you click left, it'll yeah, it knock you like over. Yeah, 35 or 40 degrees. Like. So it starts out at 30 degrees, which I didn't like because I was having to click over so often. Mm -hmm. um, so I changed it to like a 45 degree. Yeah. So that way I'm moving almost... a. I'm moving half of a quarter. I'm yeah. moving an eighth. Of I watched the some wheel. people playing online. They had it set still a thirty. Yeah, and like I was just like, I don't want to watch this anymore because it, they're, it they're makes doing it feel it, too jerky. They're doing it way too much and too often. I'm like, yeah. Just, yeah. Even at that, like if I was watching playback on my stuff, like it, it almost feels a little too jerky. But I mean, I'm running around the house, taking corners fast. But not you, you get the mentality that you expect it and you're ready for it. So yeah, yeah. Your brain's just ready to go. Yeah. Go. So you, and it. It plays really smooth. It looks. Yeah. It it has some like graphical fidelity where like you can tell when the textures kind of soften to accommodate the amount of movement you're doing, and then as you kind of sit still or wait longer, like it gets de more detailed. Cool. But I highly recommend at least trying the VR mode. Nice.